Hello, my name is Yvette. I work for the embassy and I've been using YouTube for quite a few years, maybe five years or more. But I never until now decided to make my own channel where I can share my own thoughts and personal ideas with the world. And the reason I decided to start this is because I feel like YouTube is a very effective media. It gets the dynamic across quite well, it gets dialogue across very well. And I use it in my everyday life for work, so I thought, why not make my own YouTube channel and I can share my ideas with you and explain a lot of tips I've learned over the years. So I thought that I would kick things off with a get to know me tag, so you can watch it at home and you can tell me what you thought about my thoughts. And I thought it would be just a good way for you to get to know me and me to maybe get to know you if you comment below. So the first question on this is, are you lazy? Now my answer is no. I have a very busy schedule. I wake up at around 5.30 a.m., maybe 6 on a very late day. But I usually wake up at 5.30 because there is a lot that needs to be done. I cannot afford to Skype off my work. So they need me over there. And I feel like if you are not in it, your art has to be in it. If your art is not in it, then where are you? You might as well be working at Starbucks. I don't know. But it's very important that if you have your mind on something, if your mind is set, then it's important to go and do it. So I wake up at 5.36 each day and I go out to work and I make sure to be on the dot. I like to be there before everybody else is there. That is one tip that I've picked up over the years. If you are the first person to turn up, then they will recognize that first of all, maybe not consciously, but people will begin to notice you as being the one who is always there, you be the regular, people will respect you more. So this is a very long and roundabout way of saying it, but oh well, I think I'm not a lazy person. I would not get away with it if I were lazy. Now, next question is, am I married? Well, interesting question. I'm not at the moment married. I have been before. I have been married a few times. Um, but it is not a big deal for me. In my country, we don't, we don't have this kind of thing that they have in the UK, you know? What do you call it? Uh, a taboo about being married many times, it's not a big deal for me. Um, I can go into a long story about my previous partners, but I think you want me to get to the next question. Uh, how old am I? Well, I am 33 right now, going on 34, but I feel very young inside and I think that is what matters. Do I have kids? Uh, I do not have any kids, not at the moment. There was a time when I wanted children, but you have to make sacrifices for your career. And there was a time when it would have been good and maybe the ideal time, according to most people, would be to have children, but it was never really my thing, you know? I think you find a point in your life where you sort of know your trajectory, and that was not mine. Sometimes I think it's a loss, other people think it is a big loss, but I have other things in my life that I care a lot about and children is not everything I care about. So, next question. Summer or winter? Uh, that is a very mundane question. Who puts these together? I guess I will answer anyway. I think summer is always a good month. I feel like at the embassy, summer is the time when it's most busy when I have the most jobs to be attending to, they need me to be there right away to write the, the paperwork and everything that I need to do. So I try to be there on the dot all the time, like I was saying earlier. But in the summer it's more important because we have a more busy schedule. We have a lot going on. Uh, what else is there? Do you use drugs? I smoke, but that is not really a drug, it does not count. There is caffeine, I mean, but I don't think that they are asking about that. There is, what is, nothing else that I take that could qualify as a drug. I mean, there are medical things, 
that were prescribed to me that uh, that does not count. I think I think he's talking about more like illegal drugs. This is the next question. Let's see. Where was I born? I think you can tell from the accent, and the fact that I work at the embassy. I will let you guess. Ever fallen in love? Well, I have had two husbands. I've had other lovers before then. I think it's a pretty obvious answer. But then again, it depends on how you define love. And I think when you are younger, it seems like a very definite thing. There is love and there is lust and there's a strong line between the two. But really, when you grow up and you have experienced more, you can see that there is not such a defined line between the two. It's, it's a very rough thing. It is not black and white. It's not one or the other. A lot of people think that you can distinguish easily, but I don't think it's so easy to distinguish like that. It's, it's life. You live it. You may call it love. Somebody else may call it lust. Somebody else may call it like a strong liking. It depends, it's subjective. Maybe if you are a more kind of sensible person, you will be able to pick out the intricate of it. But for the most part, and for most people, it is not something defined. When did you last cry? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I don't think I've cried in a long... Oh, uh, yes. It was reading this book. I actually have it with me over here. So I am a big fan of the Ars Japanese. And um, this book is quite famous. It's a classic. It was written by a famous lady in waiting in the ancient Japan. And this book did make me cry. It was so emotional. And I think it's very important to remember that you can relate to people in history. We tend to think of history as being far away. We cannot relate to it. The people uh, from the olden days, they are all ancient, they have a different lifestyle from us. But to be honest, they were people just like you and I. They had everyday lives, they ate, they drank, they drank, they had nicotine, they smoked, they lived their life like we do now. And to push that away, to, to leave that as something that is not part of yourself, is very, very destructive to yourself. It can harm you inside. It is important to remember that you can relate to people from history and you have a lot to learn from them. And I really kept that in mind when I was reading this book. I really imagined myself as a character. And to be honest, because she was a real person, it was sad the parts where she was sad or that made her cry and they made me cry as well. Oh, that reminds me. There's another book that I have over here. I take my books around with me, my favourite books, because I can always revisit them. I think this book also changed my life. It is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tai Yes, it changed my life, like it says on the cover. And this is by Marie Kondo, and it is about tidying up your house and how to get rid of things. It is inspired by the minimalist movement. Uh, that to make it seem modern, like you cannot relate to it, it is too kind of out, out there to clean. But being clean is part of it. Being clean is what it is about. And if you are interested, I would definitely recommend it to you because it is about letting go of the things that you do not need in your life. So many people just cling on to things, to, to these objects. But if you can remove them from your life, then you have a lot of space to think and to do your work. It may sound cliché, it is true. I mean, there is a reason why these clichés are invented. They are perpetuated because there is something true about them. Now, next question. What are your hobbies? Well, to be honest, my work takes up a lot of my time. The embassy always has things that need to be done. I do a lot of admin stuff. I get many promotions. It may sound like boasting to you to say that I got promotion, but it is the truth. I do get many promotions. I'm not going to try and hide it because I want you to seem modest or something. That is not the truth. The truth is that I do, and it's because I work out. I'm always the first person there. I always get to work straight away, and really, it means a lot to me to be there and be part of that environment. It, it has nurtured me. It nurtures my soul. Uh, so I arrive consistently and I do my work 
and it takes up a lot of time at home as well. People think that there's a very definite line between being at work and being at home, having hobbies and having things that you do, that you have to do, that are obligations. There's the difference between obligations and hobbies. But really, if you find work that you love, that is you inside, then there will not be such a clear distinction between them. You can enjoy your work. Uh, other than that, I'm quite passionate about style, I guess you could say. Uh, my makeup, my everyday look. I try to go for a more simple vibe. I try to wear things that are quite smart, that you could wear every day, but still stand out quite classic. So the nail polish that I wear is a consistent brand. I use this, it's not very expensive or fancy. It just says long lasting nail polish by Emma. And the lip brand that I use is this lip paint matte L'Oreal. I use that almost every day. To be honest, I have different ones. I have one for travel and I have one that I wear at home. And then there is this, it is for energy, because I do not get a lot of sleep for my job. It is Neil's Yard Family Dual Energy, and you roll it on your wrists, and you can use it on your face as highlighter as well, I sometimes do that. It gives you some energy. It has some property from a plant. I don't know what plant exactly, I don't have time to look it up, but that is what it does. And... That is me, that is a few questions to get to know me, if you want to ask me anything else you can leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe, thank you very much, bye!